here, so I'll just go through it. Um, we have to um, welcome you to this event. These very important people that you probably read the works on. And um, we'd like to thank um, the organizers, we'd like to thank the sponsors, the Canada Council of the Arts, Enbridge, Petro Canada, Talisman Energy, Free, Free Hand Books, Department of English, Faculty of Humanities, International Indigenous Studies Program, Glenville Museum, and the Alpine Center. Um, I think that um, I'll just go through a, a brief um, bio of each. Does everybody know the writers here? Okay, I'll read you a little bio. On my far right, we have Beverly Henry Wolf, who's born on the Blood Indian Reserve in Canada. She's a member of the Little Bear family, table, Blood Tribe and Black Nation. I didn't write this. She was educated at the boarding school on the reserve, and after finishing her college education, returned to the reserve as a teacher. Um, together, uh, she and her husband, Adolf Uterin, wrote Shadows of the Buffalo, which tells of their experiences. Her other publications include The Ways of My Grandmothers and Daughters of Buffalo Women Maintaining Tribal Faith. All I know that as a young person in university, I found Beverly's books, and they made me feel really good. Um, Lee Maracle is a member of the Stolo Nation, an award-winning writer and teacher. She's one of the founders of the Anaukan International School of Writing in Penticton, BC. The author of a number of works of fiction, including Sojourners and Sundogs, yeah. Gang, Raven Song, Press Gang, sorry, that was the Press Gang, and I Am Woman, Press Gang. Is that a publisher? I'm a visual artist. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, She's also the co-editor of a number of anthologies, including the award-winning publication, My Homeness, I Remember, and co-author of Telling It, Women and Languages Across Culture. Lee Miracle received the J.T. Stewart Voices of Change Award in April 2000. Other books are Will's Garden, published by Thetis Books, and Bent Box, published by Thetis Books. Sharon Pearl Turner, next to her, is a Métis writer who holds a master's in English and has taught writing and literature at the University of Calgary. Her memoir, Where Rivers Join, was shortlisted for the Edna Stabler Award for Creative Nonfiction. <coughs> Sharon's work has been widely anthropologized Anthologized. 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 <laughs> in uh, Crisp Blue Edges, Indigenous Creative Nonfiction, My Home As I Remember, Writing the Land, and Elsewhere. Her other books include She Walks for Days Inside a Thousand Eyes, A Two-Spirit Story, Turnstone Press. She is reading her blankets with her hands, Frontenac House. <clears throat> what the Auntie Say, which is in her newest one from McGillan Books, Crisp Blue Edges. Oh, no, it's not your newest one. Sorry, it's the newest one I heard of. <laughs> Chris Blue Edges, Indigenous Creative Nonfiction Thetis Books. And uh, we have Greg Schoolfield, is a Canadian Aboriginal writer whose five collections of poetry have earned him both a national and international audience. He's known for his unique and dynamic reading style that blends oral storytelling, songs, spoken word, and the Cree language. His poetry and memoir, Thunder Through My Veins, Harper Collins, 1999, is taught at universities and colleges throughout Canada and the U.S. And his work has appeared in many anthologies. His latest collection, Kipu Chicken. 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 A republication, wow, how did the U.S. colonies get into this? A republication of my new two Métis women and his third collection of poetry, Love Medicine and One Song, will be released in 2009. He currently lives in Maple Ridge, B.C. Um, this panel um, is, the title of it was Traditional Innovation and Productive Tensions Within Aboriginal Writing. I found that really interesting. And, um, Who's got the uh, breakdown of that? Does someone have a sheet to break down again? I think I do. It's over there, right there on the ledge. I think that's what you're talking about, but I'm not sure. <laughs> I just I just wanted to make a little a little quick comment here. Um, are you filming on your cell phone? No, uh, this is for John. Oh, it no, is. No, don't don't. You 
can't film with them asking. Oh, sorry. Yeah, because uh, we we are we're already being filmed, Dick. That we've uh, signed consent for this oh. work. So if you don't mind. No problem. She's no problem. been signed. Oh my. Huh? Well, we've been given consent for us. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so that um, title panel. No, okay. Is it? Where'd you get that? Oh, well, I'm going to read one I was saying. This is better. Huh? Oh, I thought they were both confusing. The panel was conceived as a discussion on the productive tensions in Aboriginal writing between the need to preserve traditional stories and forms on the one hand and the pull of artistic innovation on the other. This issue may be linked to different life experiences between elder generations and younger people, between life on the reserve and in an urban setting, as well as issue of gender and sexual identity of hybridity and surrounding a variety of literary genres and forms. I just wanted to make a comment that um, as a visual artist, um, we're out there creating, making art, responding to the world around us from the center of our being and who we are. And our work goes out there and then there's a whole gang of people that come roaring along, and they're called the theorists, and they kind of do something with our stuff, which we may not have intended. And sometimes, with all of the different um, labels and, um, and uh, ways of sort of examining our work, it, it makes us feel broken up, fractured. And we're already fractured, you know. That's, as indigenous people or native people or Indian people or Aboriginal people, whatever everybody else is calling us now, we're already fractured. We have all these different divisions. So the panel um, is going to address some of these issues, and they're going to do it in whatever they, way they wish to. It's their choice, what they would like to share with you today. And so, um, Lee, would you start? Sure. Always anxious to get going. <laughs> you know, my life's coming to a close here, so I'm <laughs> 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 